evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to yet another talk. Uh, another talk by Canva Skeptics. Excuse me. Is that working? Still working? It is. Um, That's it. I'm Michael Rook, uh, president of uh, Thank you. Canva Skeptics. Um, as you can see from the screen, and you would have seen through email, we've got Colin Graves talking tonight, and you know what it's about. Um, just to refresh my memory on what uh, Colin does, I looked him up on the internet, he's got an interesting little website, and I discovered, which I didn't know, that he's got a fancy title of Professor of Bioanthropology. Um, and his specialty is uh, mammalian taxonomy, with a special reference to primates. Um, so without further ado, I'll ask Colin to come and talk about uh, the so-called Hobbit. Thanks very much. Thank you. Homo floresiensis, aka the Hobbit. Um, the Hobbit is not Colin Groves. I'm Colin Groves. That is various uh, attempts at the Hobbit. Where does this Homo floresiensis live? On Flores, an island in south central Indonesia. And the next closest fossil humans before Homo sapiens were there on Java, which is three islands to the west. Of, um, of the island of Flores, and when they lived was, well, it's constrained. The um, known specimens appear to be constrained between 74,000 and 12,000 years ago, strikingly late. Lots of people have liked to imagine what these so-called hobbits looked like, and um, here's a, a, a couple of attempts, and you saw lots of faces beforehand, and um, the one on the right reminds us that um, the chief uh, pride and joy of Flores and its offshore islands today is the grotesque Komodo dragon, the world's largest lizards, and these tiny hobbits would have had to have coped with that. Lianbua Cave is the site where Homo floresiensis was discovered, uh, a huge limestone cavern dug by Mike Moorwood who I notice is not a million miles from here at this moment. Um, and uh, the size of the skeleton LB1, the Angua 1, which they discover, um, is uh, indicated there. It's approximately one meter tall. And uh, here are all, its, uh, all the bones. And uh, bottom right, is the space that they take up, a very tiny creature. Although LB1 is the most complete individual, much the most complete, it's not the only one there. LB2 to 9 are isolated limb bones, and there's a second jaw and teeth, and they're all tiny. And of course, um, various, various uh, uh, web opinions, on it. And one person said the timing of the present presumed demise of these hobbits is of interest to anomaly researchers. I didn't know that there were anomaly researchers, but okay, there's anomalies, why not research them? The date, 10,500 BC, is often banded about as a period of great catastrophe. Often, well, okay, it shows I've perhaps um, been elsewhere for a while because I didn't know it was often banded about. It is said to mark the end of a lost golden age of civilization, usually associated with a transglobal super race, or of Atlantis. Perhaps also the destruction of the equally fabled lost continent of Mu, located in the Pacific Ocean, and said to be a dominant world culture 25,000 years ago. Well, you learn these things, and that comes from a site called The Hobbit and the Dark Star, and there's its address. Significant, too, is the fact that Ainu traditions tell of a race of dwarves of Koropoguri inhabited Japan before the coming of the Ainu. Japan? Yeah, the Ainu live in Japan today. Are the Koropoguri, the Hobbit, Homo floresiensis? <coughs> I've a lot of traveling, perhaps, why not? 
And that comes from a site called History, Asia, Pre Pharaoh, Trail, Hobbit, Homo, Floresiensis, Melanesia, Malaysia, Ainu, Japan, and China. And here's the address. This should cause <coughs> Christians to assert without embarrassment that the little people of Flores were human beings, descendants of Adam, bearing the image of God. They were smaller than us, but we have encountered pygmy groups before. We could also argue on the basis of biblical revelation that they probably lived much more recently than the archaeologists tell us. <laughs> Bad luck to the archaeologists. First person, dragon slaying hobbits and biblical truth by Russell D. Moore, Baptist Press, etc. The site. And this is just another example of the hurriedness of evolutionists. Evolutionist is an approximate synonym for scientists to accept a fossil that would prove evolution without checking out the facts completely. You see this in the already debunked Piltdown Man, Nebraska Man, Lucy. Lucy debunked? I didn't know that. <laughs> and others. And pro read papers and a journal exploring biblical thought concerning various subjects. Address for anybody I can see you all busily taking it down. Well, the storm clouds were already gathering over the Hobbit. Some say it's a modern microcephalic. Microcephalic people are people born with abnormally small brains under 700 cc. The <coughs> modern human average is about 1400. And um, the LB1 has a uh, brain size, approximate cranial capacity of about 400 cc, well below the limit that if you think it's a microcephalic, Feet. And here is a microcephalic with uh, his carer on the right. The normal human range is very wide, about 1,000 to 2,000 cc's, but of course it forms um, what um, uh, biometricians know as a normal curve, that is to say most people are sort of clustered around the mean, and the further away you get from the mean on either side, you, um, uh, the, the rarer are particular individuals. Nonetheless, the novelist Anatole France is said to have had a cranial capacity, that is the volume inside the brain case of only 1100 cc's, and you may or may not rejoice in the news that Oliver Cromwell had one of 2000 cc's. <laughs> All right, let's take it at face value before we look at the microcephalic idea. A new human species was described, Homo floresiensis. So where does it fit? That's when it lived, and I put it on one of these charts you find on the web of uh, human evolution, and we'll examine a few particular candidate S um, to, uh, to compare it with Homo floresiensis. We'll examine these uh, so-called gracile Australopithecines, Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus. We'll examine Homo habilis and Homo ergaster, and Homo erectus, which lasted a long time um, outside uh, Africa. All these others lived in Africa. So we'll talk about these Australopithecines first of all. Here's two species. Here's the um, debunked or not debunked Lucy on the left, um, a uh, one third complete uh, skeleton. Um, and Australopithecus afarensis is not only known from the Lucy skeleton, but lots and lots of specimens from East Africa, or it's Africans, <coughs> from lots and lots of specimens from South Africa. So they were, um, uh, as we say, vicarian, that is to say, um, living in different parts of Africa. Um, only Africanus is somewhat later in time, two to three million years ago, approximately, Afarensis earlier, three to four. And the cranial capacities of um, both of them are small, um, Afarensis 350 to 450 cc, so it, it covers the range uh, of the Hobbit. And uh, Africanus 430 to 510, so slightly bigger than the Hobbit. And they both have protruding jaws, no chin, short legs, long, muscly arms, and a flaring pelvis. 